Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. Today, it's time to turn this pitiful excuse of a space station into a warp ship so that we can attempt to finish off advanced rocketry today. And honestly, while it looks like there's a lot of nodes left here, most of it's just exploring the planets. Our next step is to make the warp core, which will actually let us achieve warp space travel so we can go to these other planets. And the warp core requires a bunch of stuff we've already made for the most part, and a warp core itself, which is honestly not that hard to make at this point because it's just the circuits and plates we've made previously. And if I'd been thinking about this, I would have filmed this intro back on the overworld where I can actually use my wireless interface. Oops. All right, so now that I'm back in my base, I made it pretty quickly, but I have to go put together the other pieces for it, as well as actually install it in the space station shop, which probably means I should probably expand the size of it and, I don't know, build out under where the astral sorcery platform is, just to add some more space to the structure. All right, so I filled in the space under my celestial altar, and now the place looks a little bit less trashy at least. It looks like it's more contiguous, and it gave me a spot to put down the warp core multi-block structure. Now, this is a standard advanced rocketry multi-block, so you can use the hollow projector to get the pattern for it. And in case you've forgotten how this works, you just shift right click into it, and you can select it from near the bottom. You have to scroll the list, and it's quite a ways down and you can click on it and then right click it to put it where you want it to be. And I think I'm just gonna put it right here. And you can um, you can shift mouse wheel to find the other pieces of the structure or to get it to display the whole thing. All right, having placed everything, we should now just have to touch the warp core itself to start it up. And there it's now converted. The input is up at the top up here, which is kind of inconveniently placed, but I'm going to wire this up to an entangle porter to pipe dilithium crystals into it. All right, and now as soon as I attach this into the uh, warp core, it immediately powered up. If we look inside the input hatch, you can see that the lithium crystals are getting pushed in. So now we need to move on to our next step, which is the warp controller, because the warp drive isn't good enough by itself. We need the means to actually go somewhere. And the warp controller, thankfully, is also relatively easy to make, although I need to make some more machine structures, so that'll take a second, because I don't have this all automated yet, unfortunately. Because the signal for cell frame is kind of a giant pain and I haven't wired up the uh, all of the pieces for it yet. Probably should get around to that. But honestly, I'm hoping just to outlast this whole step in needing to even make these. We'll see how that works out for me, I guess. All right, so I made the uh, warp controller and we're back on our space station. I brought the rocket back up here so that we can uh, see if I understand how all of this works properly. Let's go plug this in. It looks like it doesn't matter where you drop this. It doesn't seem to require power. It shows you the, the basic interface, uh, what planet we have selected, where we're at, how much fuel it costs, how much fuel we have. And we can go to the planet list and pick another planet. In doing so, it tells us how much fuel it will use to go to Neptune. If we go back into this and we go up here, you can see that we can see different solar systems. And this is where we find some of the more odd planets, the ones that have the materials we need. Stuff like the, the Kelt 4B and whatnot. But if we look in the quest book, this can tell us where we need to start looking. Although we've already got the Yor series done here because we got them from our laser base. But let's start with the Destabilized Clathrate, which looks like it can be found in Terranova, Europa, and Kelt 2AB, as well as Proxima B and Stella. So let's pick one of these. Stella appears to have the best drop chance for this. Stella is in the Proxima Centauri system. So we can select this and hit the warp button and pray I understand what we're doing here because this could go badly. But here we go. This is the part where I hope that the Astral Sorcery Celestial Gateway actually works properly when we're in another dimension, but we'll have to try that when we get there. Pray it doesn't crash the server. But my understanding is that it should. Now, the other thing to note is I brought a bunch of marble and a bunch of celestial gateways so that we'll be able to set these up permanently. And I brought an anvil so that we can name it. And now I'm realizing I don't actually have XP. So uh, that's unfortunate. We gotta hope the gateway works. I wonder when I died. 
Okay, so uh, it took what felt like a couple minutes to get here, so maybe bring something to do while you're here. I also did confirm that the Celestial Gateway does work in both directions, so I'm gonna get some XP, I'm gonna go slam a name on that Celestial Gateway, and then we can go drop to the surface. Oh yeah, I'm also gonna need the Digital Miner, huh? I probably should go get that out of Deep Dark. <laughs> Almost forgot the most important part of this trip. All right, one last check. Let's make sure I have everything we need before we go. Digital Miner with his Entangle Porter and all of its stuff. All of the things needed to make a Celestial Altar, my fuel tank, and a bucket. So we, we can refill the rocket if anything goes wrong, and some fireflies for torches. All right, let's see if I understand this. Let's see if I get stranded. Okay, looks like our destination is Stella. Hopefully it will actually land on the planet and not back on the space station. All right, and it looks like we have a map. It says Mystic Grove, that's interesting. So hopefully this means we actually got on the planet. Down we go. This is the part where I'm going to regret that I'm in a spacesuit and that I don't have airtight armor, probably. I probably should work on that because I'm seeing red dots. This could actually be dangerous. All right, and it looks like we're actually landing on a planet here that isn't just an ugly moon. Oh, and we unfortunately landed on a tree. That's going to be awkward. Okay, I can fly, so we're okay. All right, so I'm going to uh, do a quick look around, find a spot for to put the altar down, and be back in a sec, and hopefully not die in the process. Okay, so good news. There is atmosphere on this planet. I was able to switch over my armor. It's also nighttime, and I have not seen any mobs. So I think this might be a relatively safe planet. It's also kind of pretty. It's kind of like a, a magic forest type biome. Uh, just with some pretty trees. It's kind of like, almost like the Twilight Forest. I, I'm almost tempted to build a base here, except I kind of just want to finish the path. <laughs> so we should probably focus on progression. So I, I built the Celestial Gateway, that works going back and forth. I built the, put down the Digital Miner, and got that pulling stuff up, we can wait on that. I went and refueled my rocket up on top of the tree, but that will never have to land here again. I think it's time to put my spacesuit back on and take that back up to the space station. And go see if we need to go look for another planet now. Okay, I stopped back at from my base to check on the ore processing from Stella. And we actually did get a bunch of the destabilized redstone ore, and it is processing the pulverizer in my ore processing stuff. There was a lot more than this. So that closed out the destabilized clathrate step here, which also unlocked iridium and rutile, which are coming from our laser base. So no surprise that this whole line is finished. Next, we should probably find the energized clathrate. And the energized clathrate is Mercury, Kepler, Venus, and Novus of which Mercury has the best rate it appears, but not by much. If we look at the resonant clathrate, it's also Mars, Kepler-119, Kelt-3, and Feluca. This is the most interesting sounding one to me, but they all also have mostly the same rates. So honestly, I think I'm gonna set up for Feluca and Novus just because those actually sound like interesting planets. That may or may not kill me. All right, here I am on Novus, and this is significantly less friendly looking. The trip was really quick, though, because it's the same system as Stella. The Luke is the same way. Let's go find out how bad this is. Well, this is a significantly less cheery planet. Lava and what looks like petrothium everywhere. And all darkness, even during the middle of the day. Gonna have to drop a whole bunch of uh, fireflies to light up uh, my altar area. Also, there's no atmosphere. I took off my helmet and immediately regretted it. Okay, I think I can honestly say I hate this planet. Uh, the way it's structured, all of the ash, it's like the nether, but even worse. At least I haven't seen any mobs here. So I hopped over to Stella, I grabbed the digital miner, I've got that running. So far this seems to be a good source of draconium ore though, I've seen a bunch of that come up so far. Uh, but we just need to wait for the clathrate. I'm going to go move the space station over to Feluca though while we wait. Well, I'm on Feluca and this planet is a big huge lie. Despite there being trees and grass, there is no atmosphere whatsoever, which I guess might kind of jive with the fact that there's no leaves, but there's grass! There's grass, there cannot be grass. But uh, this is also sunrise and there is no light, despite the fact that the sun's right there. So uh, this is kind of super awkward without night vision, but thankfully I just need to pop a portal down right now here. And I may can look around a little bit, but so far I'm not really seeing anything all that interesting here. All right, so I've got things set up on Feluca now to try to get the last clathrate we need, and I have figured something out with this planet that I didn't realize, because 
All of these dead trees are charcoal trees here. But if you start going out, you start finding normal forestry and biomes of plenty trees. Tons and tons of varieties of them. Like over here, some more and another different type. They're all over. So this is actually a good source of trees if you can put in the effort and deal with the fact that there's no oxygen. I wouldn't bother unless you're really hurting for them because you can't get saplings from these. Uh, you can only get the logs. So it is still limited in that respect, but they are here. All right, so back in my base and hopefully mostly done with space for now because now we have the resonant clathrate finished, which also got the draconium ore in the process. Now we have one last thing to do that I have absolutely no intention of using, and that's the Astro Body Data Processor, which, as this said, is for mining asteroids, which frankly is supposedly kind of buggy. So we're just gonna build the pieces and we're just gonna call it a day at that unless I'm absolutely forced to use this. And as you can see from this, it's mostly all pieces we made before except for these three data buses, which aren't that hard to make. It's just these data storage units we've made before combined with the storage machine structure, and the Astro Body Data Processor itself, which is all stuff we've also made before, because it's just these tracking circuits and the Planet ID chips. And with this, we are hopefully done with space stuff for quite a while. So I guess let's go collect all of these so that we can properly close out this chapter. All right, let's go through this huge pile of chests. Oh, finally a neutron collector. I've been waiting for this for a while. We can pop this down, pull, constantly pull neutron dust out of it. This is actually pretty fantastic. I'm actually going to go set this up immediately after we're done with this, but you guys don't need to see that. Sanium essences, which we don't need. Free food. Free litharite that we don't need. More free food that we used to haven't eaten this. Free hardened cell frame that I have automated. Yeah. Razor wire. Brewing stands, really? Frame blocks, really? And her offset wand. I don't even remember what this does. It's a chiseling, so it's a decorative thing, but I don't, I don't remember. Food we've eaten. Oh, singularity that we don't have to make now at least although I don't think they're that hard at this point <laughs> lapis blocks ironwood blocks seared bricks food we've eaten more in the wild that we don't need more draconic evolution wires and their pouch that I'm not going to complain about and free augments that we don't really need so honestly that was a better haul than I've gotten quite a while, so I'm not going to complain at all, especially now that we've got a free neutron collector. We need to start passively collecting that stuff. It takes a long time. It's not fast, and they are expensive to make. So I'm going to call that good, along with finishing off advanced rocketry. At least I hope. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go back to some of these plants to get some more stuff, but I've got a few thousand of the clathrates for now. So if you found this interesting or entertaining, please consider giving a subscribe or a like. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.